Good morning. <laughs> um, did everybody get their card stocks and a pencil to write with? If not, Margie is in the narthex ready to fill you up. We'll be using these during the offertory. And they're a way to write down something that you want to put out in the world, a message, a hope, a dream. So hold on to those till the offertory and we'll be filling those out. Uh, before we show a clip about our Lenten series, is there anybody that has any other announcements to make? All right, so let's show our Lenten series. Jesus was very clear that following him might not always be a smooth ride, for he always sought to choose the just ways of life, not just the easy ways, but the just ways of life. So in our focus gospel reading for today, he talks about taking up the cross and being willing to lose our lives to let go of certain expectations of safety and acceptance in order to take a stand for the gospel message of love. So let's take a moment to discern how is it that we are able to take up the causes of Jesus and work towards the ways of justice, righteousness, and mercy in our day? Now, let us pray together. Motivating and invigorating God, you challenge us to walk a deep path. Show us, as Jesus did, that letting go of our own security and comfort is the only way to create space for your justice to move over the earth. In this moment of quiet, we lift up to you those things we'd like to give up for good, for the sake of the good. And now let us hear assurance from what the psalmist proclaims through Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise God. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify God. Stand in awe of God, all you offspring of Israel. For God did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. God did not hide God's face from me, but heard when I cried out. 
From you comes my praise in the great congregation, my vows I will make before God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek God shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Now this is assurance. The assurance we proclaim in the name of Christ. You are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Everybody's invited to be seated. Last week we started with, what's up? Yeah. Can you say that, Mike? Can you say what's up for me? What's up? There we go. There, Judy, can you say what's up? What's up? Man, isn't that great to say? Isn't that just, it's just fun to say, isn't it? But even with our theme this season being about rising up, sometimes we don't feel so up, do we? In our focus reading, Jesus says some words that were really tough to hear. And he tells the disciples that if they want to follow him, they had to be ready for life to get tough and even bumpy at times. You know, Jesus didn't choose an easy path, did he? No, he did not. No. He chose what was right and good, even though those choices were hard. Yes, and Jesus knows that doing the right thing isn't always easy for the rest of us either. But even when things get rough, we can be sure that God is always with us and that God is always up to something good in our lives and in the world, even if we can't see it, even if we don't understand it. So throughout Lent, we are going to be closing our service by saying, when somebody comes up to you and asks you, what are you up to? The congregation is invited to respond. With God's help, I'm up to something good. Very good. So let's plan on doing something good today. Very good. Our gospel reading today is taken from Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, 
and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
And let us pray. God of our hearts, not of our outer garments, nor our church structures, nor our programs, or even our human plans. You are the only one who truly, truly knows us. You are the only one who can meet us where we are and help us to rise to new heights. So as we seek to unpack your word on this second Sunday of Lent, we ask that you work within us, opening us more fully to your love, to your life, to your ways. Enable us to rise up in ways that bring us more fully into kinship with you. Amen. So I know you see some hot air balloons float the sanctuary today. And when I was in high school, one of my parents' friends was a pastor who also happened to have a hot air balloon. And one afternoon, he took my family up for a ride in it. And as we climbed in, and as we rose higher and higher, my mom didn't really even want to be in the basket, and then she got a little bit nervous when the bottom of the basket that we were in brushed against the trees as it didn't clear them quite as much as was planned. So in a way to assure my mom that everything was okay, as we looked out over the rich crop fields and the towns below, and as we slowly floated by God's beautiful creation, our friend took time to teach us a bit about how it is that we were able to stay safely inside the gondola as we journeyed higher and higher and further and further. All around the basket and tucked within it are what is called ballasts. And ballasts are filled with sand or water or some other material that adds weight when and where it's needed. And these ballasts keep the basket upright. It keeps it upright when it's being filled with hot air on the ground and even when it's being filled with hot air in the sky. And as the balloon is ascending, it also keeps the, ba- keeps the balloon from ascending too quickly. And the ballasts keep the basket steady as we journey across the sky, even, even if it brushes against the trees or if it is hit by an unexpected gust of wind. And if you would need to ascend quicker or move faster, all you need to do is release some of the weight in one of the ballasts. And like the ballasts in a hot air balloon, we too, there are times that we too need to release things. We need to release things that might be weighing us down in this life. And maybe this is what's going on in our gospel reading for today. You see, this is the first time in Mark's gospel that Jesus unpacks the reality, the reality of the challenges that are coming the challenges that will come for those who choose to follow the same path that he is on. You see, Jesus would have known what it was he was asking of himself and of his followers. You see, just two chapters before this one, in chapter 6 in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus learned about the gruesome death of his cousin, John the Baptist. You see, John stood up He stood up to Herod's choice to divorce his wife and marry his niece, Herodias, while Herodias was still married to her husband, Philip. They had crossed the line on so many fronts, and John wasn't afraid to challenge them. But standing up for right, standing up for what was right, it caused John to be placed in the crosshairs of ire especially from Herodias. And holding on to this grudge, she carefully planned and she plotted until she eventually was able to manipulate things in a way that led to John's horrific public beheading. Now, with the grief over this death still gnawing at him, and perhaps even a bit fearful over what the future held for himself and all those that were with him, Jesus started to teach 
He started to teach in a way to prepare the disciples for the future that lay ahead for him and for each of them. But Peter, you know, Peter, our rock, he pushes against what he hears Jesus say. And it's only Jesus, it's only human, I believe, that Jesus would feel a little bit irritated and angry that Peter would react and push against what he was teaching. How could his trusted disciple not realize where all of this had been leading? After all, Jesus had known for a long time where this kind of path was going to go. In a culture that tended to deal out death blows to anybody, to anybody who would stand up for what was right, where else, where else could this lead? And it's from this emotional mix of wisdom and worry and grief that Peter rebukes Jesus. And Jesus rebukes him right back with words that seem to catch everybody off guard. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Get behind me, Satan. Ouch. Did you feel that sting? Perhaps you, like me, can relate to how Peter felt when he heard his friend, his beloved, his savior, when he heard him say these things. But backing up a bit, perhaps you, like me, can also relate to Peter's resistance when he heard Jesus talking about this stuff. None of us like to think about somebody that we love, somebody that we adore being rejected or experiencing suffering of any kind, much less being crucified. But everything came to a head with the abrasive words, get behind me, Satan. Jesus' harsh words were like a volcanic eruption of emotions. His reaction was a lot like the impulse one might have to quickly cut the ballasts off of a gondola to gain altitude quickly when a gust of wind is coming. And like Jesus, we too can carry a lot of ballast in our lives. And some of it can weigh us down when we need to rise above things. But Jesus didn't just release the weight in this passage. Jesus also distributed weight to his followers when he taught them that they had a cross that they'd be taking up as well. Now, weight in and of itself isn't so bad. And like hot air balloons, sometimes we need to add weight to our lives for stability. Sometimes we are too high and we are too far removed from reality and we need ballast to bring us back down to earth, back down to reality, to truth. And Jesus' invitation to take up our cross is an invitation not to be too far removed from suffering or pain because those places of hardship, those places of struggle, Those places where we carry the weight are where Jesus is already at work. For a life of discipleship, that is, a life seeking to follow Jesus, will consist of both joy and buoyancy, as well as hardship, pain, and the weight of sorrow. And the art of using ballast is the art of balance. There will be times that we need to carry the weight, and there will be times when we need to release it. And there is a fine balance in knowing when and how to hold on and when and how to let go in this life. Jesus released the weight of Peter's rebuke. But at the same time, he also encouraged the disciples of every generation, every generation to take on the weight of the cross, the weight of struggle, the weight of suffering, and not avoid it. 
But even as we seek to carry that weight, we also need to remember that we can't carry that weight indefinitely. Sometimes, sometimes we have to let it go. Yes, in order to follow Jesus, we have to be willing to stand up against power, especially when that power is causing unjust and unbalanced situations and circumstances. And we have to be ready to reach out our hands to help, even reaching out to those who are deemed untouchable. And we have to be willing to extend a heart of love, even to those who may be deemed unlovable. For all people deserve the opportunity to rise up to God's love. But we also have to recognize what needs to be let go. We have to release ourselves from the weight of guilt. We have to drop the weight of unreasonable expectations. We have to let the weight of self-loathing and self-doubt go. And we must be willing to release those things that keep playing in the back of our head and telling us, you know, those things that tell us that we aren't worthy or we're not capable. We need to be willing to let those recordings stop and fall out of our heads. And we must be willing to let go of the lies that we keep holding on to, the ones that we keep believing that prevent us from living the life, the life that God has created for each and every one of us, the life that Jesus is calling us towards. And when we find a way to let go of these things, and when we find a way to find balance in our lives, we will find ourselves equipped And we will find ourselves ready to rise up. And we will be ready to step into the footprints of Jesus. And we will gain the strength to be able to take up the cross that Jesus is encouraging us to carry. So now let us rise up with the life and the love of Christ as we turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to prayer. As we begin our time of prayer today, I want to invite you and remind you we had to cancel our Wednesday study this past week because of COVID, but I want to invite everybody this Wednesday to the study. You can find out more in the back of your bulletin. And I also want to encourage you to, if you haven't picked up already, our journals our Lenten journals that invite us into quiet prayer and reflection, those you can take home and do on your own. And I hope that carving out regular moments to stop, let go for a while, and offer your intentions to God is a way that will allow Lenten practices to be uplifting for you, connecting you to a moment each and every day with a source of goodness. And if you like incense or candles, when spending time in quiet reflection or prayer, we encourage you to take time to light one of them. This would connect you to our practice that we find in ancient ancient scripture, and it's mentioned by psalmist in Psalm 41, 141. I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me, give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer rise up as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. And we're going to be singing that as we move through this prayer time. cry out to you, O God, 
from the wreckage of a world wracked with sorrow and struggle. Our hands are often idle in the face of injustice, though we know you call us to take action. Even when we feel so small and are tempted to believe that we cannot make a difference, we pray that we can be up to something good for ourselves, for our neighborhoods, and for our world. And so this week, we start with thanksgiving for these acts of uplifting goodness. We thank you for good test results. And we see your goodness in family. And we thank you for the beautiful sun that is shining through our sky and the warm weather we can look forward to in the week ahead. Let my prayers rise up. We call upon you, O God, to incline your ear and extend your love and healing power for these laments and concerns that are before us today. We ask for your care for Robin and Gavin and Matthew. We ask for your healing for Darren in the face of cancer returned. We ask for your love for Jennifer and Donnelly. We ask for your presence for John and Darlene. We ask for your peace to flow to Bob and Crystal. We ask for your presence for Jeff and Sandy. And we ask for your healing for Barry. And we ask for your presence and your peace for David Good in the face of his surgeries and his struggles. And we ask for your presence for Jay and Lori. Let my prayers rise up. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. We call upon you, O God, to give us the strength and the courage to be up to something good for the sake of the good. In this moment, in our mind's eye, we imagine and offer our commitment to one small thing this week, one small thing that will lift someone up, elevate and affirm the good when we see it and bring a bit more calm or joy where we are. And if we find that we are not up to it, we pray we can accept the goodness of others and that we are able to feel your encouraging love. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
So during this series of Lent, we will offer our support for church activities, for our mission and budget in our usual ways. But we will also be creating uplifting messages, uplifting messages that we want to put out there in the world. So as we listen to offertory music today, you're invited to use the cardstock you were given earlier and write a message that you want to put out into the world. And then these will be gathered after service in the basket that's in the chancel. Spirit of life, we offer these gifts not as reluctant sacrifices, but as wholehearted tokens of gratitude for all you are doing in this community and in our lives. May our offerings help further God's goodness and mercy here and everywhere. And
So now let us rise up and go out into the world. Pick up where you left off on the path that God has set out before each and every one of you, leaving behind and letting go of the ballast of uncertainty, letting go of the need for everything to be just perfect, and trusting your decision to follow the one who taught us the way of love knowing that you have all that you need to be up to something. So, when someone asks you, what are you up to, you can respond, with God's help, I am up to something good. And let the people say, Amen.